Okay, so the way we actually make this, I'll show you from scratch and then I'll explain. Um, so let's, let's make a new layer, Mansard 2. Basically, draw the roof shape to begin with, with a rectangle tool. Um, so let's, let's make it 15 meters by eight meters, something like that. And then let's go ahead and create a roof to begin with. So create roof. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess we'll go 45 degrees maybe for this first instance and <laughs> overhang is fine so we'll just click OK and we'll, we'll retain the original object as well so we, right. did, we did that last time didn't we that's, that's where we sort of started off creating a roof let me just take it right back out you'll see why and then I'll use the offset tool and I'll just offset it by distance, so, so that I'm on the corners, I'm 45 degrees essentially. Right. Okay, so wherever you want your next angle changes, um, let's say, I don't know, let's say minus two meters, try that, and click. Okay, so what we can do, see these, this roof here, the first thing you need to do is ungroup it. And when you ungroup it, you can change it into uh, high level objects, so it drops the high level objects and it becomes a series of roof faces. So it still looks like a roof, but now it says roof face. Can you see? Okay. So right. the, the difference between roof faces and normal roofs is you can add and clip surface then, whoops, wrong one, clip surface like this. So now, you know, I've only got that for my roof to begin with. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then it really is just a case of doing the same thing. For this shape, so this time we'll do create roof. We'll do a, a smaller angle, let's say 22.5 degrees. Zero overhang on this one, of course. And again, we'll delete the source poly. Okay, and we're almost there to be honest. So now I just need to hold B down and get my X ray. Click and move, just snap that into the right position. And then, you know, the top bit can just be left like that. So it's pretty easy, really. All right. Um, and then I suppose the other tip is you go, you can give it a roof style if, want, if you want. But I'm just going to go to render. And I'm just going to select the class, the texture. And let's just do the metal roof. As long as I go to top, so top texture for the class, and then I can just double click and apply that same texture onto it. How's that look? All right. Yeah? Yeah. It's um, a bit different inside maybe if, can you see, it's because I've got horizontal eaves there, but again, uh -huh. I, I could change that if needed. Maybe we want those vertical. That's better, isn't it? Vertical. You see inside now it's sort of correct? Yeah. Cool, Jermaine. So that's all it is really. Um, it's ungrouping to create a roof face. Uh, I'm just going to try something because I just had a thought. I don't know if this would work. I'm just going to try it on this smaller one here. It did just occur to me what if we didn't ungroup it, would it work? And actually, to be fair, it, it does. So, you know, you don't have to ungroup it for this to work if you don't want to. Okay. So maybe that's something you, you can give a go in a minute. Let's do that, let's do 10 degrees. So really it's just two individual roofs placed on top of each other. Right, right. Pretty cool, eh? Yeah. Easy and cool. I think the key is to know that you've just got to break it down and there's no way to do it with one single roof. Right. right. Happy with that? Yeah. Cool. I just want to show you something. Let's say that this roof moved forward a bit, um, 1500. Then there is a way that you can join these roofs and that is strangely this tool here, the connecting tool. Mm -hmm. 
So what you can do is you can look at the mode and you can see there's some different roof modes here. So let's try that one. And basically I just kind of drag across to connect those roofs up. And, okay. and then this one I can just use my 2D reshape tool just to stretch it down. So you know it's still quite easy to change. Okay. Sure. But do you remember that the, the joining tool here has a a mode, specific mode for joining roofs. Is it in 2019 or only 2020? It's in both, yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's have a look at the Dutch here. Right. Yeah, this is, a, this is okay, this one actually. So I'll do it the same size. So starting from scratch, I'll just, uh, I'll just cut that shape and let's go and do Dutch chip too. So there's my shape. So again, we start off with the roof tool, create roof. What angle do you generally do your roofs at? Mm, 30, say 30 degrees. 30 degrees, yeah. Yeah, or 40. Yeah, we can probably adjust it afterwards. Let's just click OK. So then we click on, remember, the individual roof faces. Right. And we talked last time about doing gables, didn't we? Yes, we, we did. So let's do a Dutch gable. Okay. Um, so we've got a specific option for this now, which is good. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's have a look. Yeah, the main main determinant is probably this one. How far away from the uh, eaves of the roof? Okay. Okay. And let's okay. Just, let's just click OK. So that's. Oh, oh all right. right. That's how you get that. It's pretty easy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You've got a couple uh, of couple of options. You can show right. a wall. So you can, you know, as part of the roof, you can actually build the wall in there, which is not bad. If you, want add, if you want to add vents or lights or whatever. Yeah, you can have a little bit of an overhang as well um, in there. Right. So mm -hmm. if, you, if you want that to just overhang slightly, which I think you probably would. Yes. That's... So what, if you'd like a vent or a light in here? Right. I know, I know how to do this now. And now I've explored the other options, I've kind of worked out what we need to do. We do the Dutch gable, but we don't show the wall as part of that. Oh. And what we do, we do this. We draw the wall then, separately on the first floor. Okay, then you create it. Yeah, then you... So let's move, let's move that wall down here, for example. Then, do you remember what we did last time? We fit it, fit walls to objects. Right. This should work. Um, so that's brilliant, that's worked fine. And now... Then you can put, then you can put the uh, yeah. window. Yeah, now we can use a window. Uh, let's go for a little round one. And let's move it up, height wise. That works yeah. okay, doesn't it? Right. So keep keep the roof as its own entity. Turn off the wall option, right. and then simply duplicate. Sorry, simply draw the wall as you would normally do, um, and fit it up into the roof underside. The the next thing we normally do, well, I normally do. You know, since you have that Dutch gable, and you want to change the angle. Yeah. See, see where you have the... Right, you see just around here? Yeah, this bit? Yeah. Right, you change the angle. So you give it two different angles. Oh, so, so you want, you want so this, but basically, instead of you make that to a gable... Something like Right, but we'll have it at a, you can have it at a shallow or steeper end. A steeper angle. Yeah. Something so, like that. Yeah, like that, but with... But you can change the angle and make it even steeper. Steeper than the the 45 that you have. Oh, I see, right, like 60. So, so, so say 60. Yeah, right. Ah, right, right. okay. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Is that what you meant? So that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the one. <laughs> um, and again, you've got the option to show the walls, but if you do show the walls, you won't be able to put your ventilation in. So I, I think you're much better off doing the option where we take the ball 
and we fit it up to, where am I now, this is on Mansard, so we kind of fit it up into the roof. And then we create the vents inside there. Yeah, you could do that with windows. In fact, do you know that there's a window? Um, let me show you this. Uh, we could move that up a bit. You do a triangle. Um. You can do, you've got diamond, um, you've got, I don't think there's triangle unfortunately, there is, although there's, let's have a look, you, what you might be able to do is, is a rectangle, top shape, gable, um, and if you went into the setting, so let, let's make the rise 600. And if you made the height not much more, that's pretty much a triangle, isn't it? Ah. There's Ooh. louvers. No, louvers. Here we go. Yes, yes, yes. So, oh, that would be a bit of a shame if you can't have... Um, so most windows, most sort of normal windows, mm -hmm. you can replace the glazing with louvers. Right. There we go. You see? That it, right. may, it may be that you can't do that with a triangular window. But, uh, but don't worry, Jermaine. I mean, it's always, it's always there with custom modelling, isn't it? You can always sort of, you know, just put some, uh, some bits in there, if you like. That's what right. I, I would normally do. Just go and, you know, yes. doing, doing it kind of badly, but... And then oh, that'll do. I'll just extrude those 25 mil. Um, just make sure that when you extrude them, of course, you need to just move them into the right spot. But then that will work as well. Yeah. Right. So just enhance what's there. So I think you've got to push it, push it to the limit. But these these are yes. nice. These louvered windows are really nice. I can see you, you guys using those quite a bit, yeah. Yes, yes we do. Yes we do. And there's different uh, blade options. Okay. That's probably the one you use, is it? Timber slaps or whatever. Yeah. Yes, that's the one we use. We Beautiful. Use. And you can do that. I think you can do that for windows and doors. Yes, we we use them a lot for the doors as well. Get the air flowing through. Uh, I mean, it serves two purposes. Okay. I mean, have the louvers open, and yeah. you can have a semi. You have the view, and then you or you can open up the entire door unit to to yeah. have in the the full view. Yeah. And ventilation. Very good. I'll just show you something else quickly that occurs to me that you might want to know as well. I imagine you have quite a lot of exposed timber rafters in some projects where you see the timber rafters underneath, do you? Right. thought so, yeah. So, I um, can't remember if I showed you this tool last time, and it doesn't hurt to refresh. You see the framing member tool. So it's on the detailing tools. Okay. Um, and this is very good for adding this extra like timber work. So, let's do... What we want to draw it there to there. Okay, there's a bunch of different options, and the one, the main one I want is this width with center line. Let's just click OK for a second. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let me pull it out here just so we can see what we're dealing with. So at the moment, it's actually just a beam. Right. And it says solid beam. So we've, right. got, we've got beams, and we can stretch the length of it, and we can type in standard sort of sizes for the beams, yeah? Right. But if we go to rafter, then what you get with a rafter is you get a pitch angle. So right. suddenly we can pitch up, I can't remember what, that was uh, 45 degrees, so let's do the same. So 45 degree pitch. And what's quite nice with the rafter is you see, you know, you get the proper vertical, you get a little bit of kind of horizontal timber, right. and then the other end of it is vertical as well. That's right. So. If you get it right, you know, you can kind of just have, let's, I'm going to, I'm going to move this thing 400 mil and hold down the alt key. 
it was copies. Remember that? Move and copy. And then when I do Command D, I just keep going. Now that spacing. So I moved it. But can you do the array too? I could do duplicate array. Right. But that was just to show you that one. Okay. They look a bit, a bit too close together. To, to be honest, the reason for that is they're all... We, we normally do it at, um, at 600. Do you? Let's make, them, <laughs> let's make them 50 mil wide as well. Okay, so let's do that properly then. Duplicate array. Yes. Let's do That's one of my favorite tools. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that <laughs> worked out quite nicely. All right. So that's great for adding those extra bits of detail. And, and, then, and then if you want to put your heap graph then Okay, yeah. Thing. Yeah, I'm with you. That is a bit more tricky. So um, let's duplicate that one. Drag that to there. And you can just change the angle. So once mm -hmm. you've done one side, um, it's pretty easy. You can take that and mirror. mirror. Take these bits. So it, it doesn't take much time to add a whole nother level of construction detail to your to your model. Yes. yes. Pretty cool. Yes. And the great thing is with these objects, because they're parametric, you know, it is easy if you just want to change the size of them. Right. To 75 mil or something, it's easy to do. Whereas if you'd extruded that it would be quite painful. Mm -hmm. Okay? Sure. So very, very useful tool, the framing member tool for beams, columns, um, any kind of timber framing at all, which obviously you must do an awful lot of. Um, yes. So yeah, I think it's... That's think pretty cool. It's pretty cool. That's really nice. Actually, I, I kind of like that session that you, you're you doing it at. It, it's quite nice. Sometimes it's good for you to show me. Other times it's quite quick for me to show you stuff, I think. That's right. I think it works yeah. well both ways.